Here in the Hoop House, outside a central school in South Berwick, Maine, something's cooking. You know, kids these days, they really need opportunities to interact with the world around them. Um, and that includes outside, in, in nature. So the more we can get them interacting and wondering about the world around them, I think the healthier they're going to be, the more well-rounded they're going to be. So our outdoor classroom really is such a crucial part of our school. But to grow outside, there's a lot of preparation inside, kicked off with a full school assembly in the gym. One of the things that most excited me about my son coming to Central School was that there was the hoop house mm -hmm. and um, gardening, which I love personally. It's something we do at home. So as soon as Wyatt came into school in his first grade, I did some volunteer efforts and keep stuff growing. And it was five years ago that this playground had a funky old swing set on it and not a whole lot more going on. And now, five years later, this is the outdoor classroom at Central School here in South Berwick, Maine, and a lot has changed in five years. What, what is amazing to me is, first of all, how, how quickly the time has gone by, but that it's continuing to flourish and we're able to attract people that are just as interested as the people that were um, with us from the beginning, and a lot of them are still with us. Uh, we're here for the planting of the grain. Um, I'm in charge of dirt, essentially. <laughs> I'm gonna help the kids, uh, I'm gonna show the kids what potting soil consists of, and we're gonna mix up a little bit fresh, and there's some potting soil in some of these buckets out here, and they're gonna fill up their pots with some potting soil and plant their seeds. The potting soil is kind of like a cake mix or a brownie mix. There's lots of different parts to it, and they all have to work together for the soil to be really successful. You know how cows eat grass? Well, we're using the part that comes out at the cow after it eats the grass. You know what that's called? We're going to put that in here. So we're going to put some of this in, too. This is called worm castings. And this is what comes out of the back end of a worm. Next, we put in some beet moss. Okay, so in goes the peat moss. If we didn't, they wouldn't have any way of drinking the water slowly. The last ingredient is called perlite, volcanic rock. Oh, and you can sort of see what it looks like. Well, that's what you're going to be putting in your pots when you pot everything. We have a hoop house over in that direction where the kids are planting all the food we're going to need for our salad bar day on the last week of school in June. There are mounds to climb on. There's amphitheater out there. Terrence Parker did a remarkable job planting, pulling out weeds, and just creating a space where kids can be themselves and be kids and be creative. Uh, it really knocks the walls down. In the first three years, we really were all about building, building the outdoor classroom and finishing it off and connecting with community members who had those talents that could have, help us get there. But when those first three years ended and we realized, wait, we've reached our goals, now what do we want to do? And that's when we started really focusing on connecting um, the outdoor classroom to our curriculum. And the very first way we did that, the most obvious way, was through literacy. And this is Ruth Trites. She's really been a big part of that transition, helping us to see what we can do to connect, whether it's through the sciences or language arts or social studies. We were just brainstorming all outside the box and coming up with you know, all these different directions, which has made the program richer. And we made these bookmarks like you might find at Barnes & Noble, and we found um, poetry, alliteration, anything that might the teacher might you know, pick up the book and think, how could I use this in my classroom? We just listed everything. It's been pretty fabulous for me to watch. Um, we have a new chef parent volunteer this year, Chef Ned, who has been cooking with these kids all year, and he's just fantastic. He just gets down and makes pastry with them. Today they're making buttery biscuits. That's a perfect size, like that right there, okay? Sure, let me help you get started a little bit. Watch this. I'm here every other Tuesday. I'm doing classes with the children. And when you're going to have to wash your hands again. It's just the way it goes. That's okay, though, right? All right, All right? Jack. Let me get we have made homemade apple crisp. We have made buttermilk biscuits. We made vegetable sushi. We made Asian noodle bowls. But it's just to teach them that they can have alternative choices. But then now they're trying things that they would have never, ever tried before. Oh, yeah. Good job. 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 Good
their dough that they made for the whole wheat buttermilk biscuit right here and then after you finish scooping you come up over here and I'm gonna give you your strawberry shortcakes okay you want another spoon that is too big too big I'll get you something small after five years I'm more convinced than ever that if kids grow food they water it they learn about how to harvest it and then they come with their friends into the school and cook it they will eat it, whether it's kale chips or Swiss chard enchiladas or biscuits, all the foods they might not think they like or might not eat at home, they'll eat it here if they grow it. So they're really learning farm to table, farm to school. It's just been a fabulous journey of five years. And then in a flash, it's June, last week of school at Salad Days. Big day, salad bar day. This is what we build up to all year. All these greens came from the hoop house, all grown by the kids. And they're pretty psyched about it. Come on over here, guys. Come on. Well, one side, one side. Can I help you do a little bit of all of them? Well, let's get a I think it's really important for our kids, our teachers, our community to learn how to grow food and learn where it comes from and how important it is to eat healthy local food. This is my first time having salad. Oh, you're, in your whole life? This is going to be the best salad of your life. I can guarantee it. I'm having my ranch dressing that I know. Oh, excellent. It's down there. Cucumbers? Yeah. The first salad of your life? I love you. I got goosebumps. Huh.